Match number 10 here in Clan Wars 10. It's in the featherweight division. Kevin Kryptonite McFall representing Chumsut. He's wearing the tap out shorts. Fighting Connor O'Kane from the YSFC, wearing the blue venom with the white trim. I understand it's been established that McFall has good stand up and we've yet to see his ground game, whereas Connor O'Kane feels best on the ground. So it might be, uh, might be a good, uh, good idea for Connor to take this to the ground. We'll see how it turns out for him. So we might get to see our striker versus grappler match after all. Exactly. <laughs> Connor coming out strong with some uh, good inside and outside leg kicks to start out. So I asked Kevin why he's called Kryptonite. Was it anything to do with his green hair? And he act in his last fight, which he won by knockout, the person he fought actually had a Superman tattoo. <laughs> so uh, I have no doubt that that poor fighter cries whenever he looks at that tattoo now. But uh, he's certainly bearing out your, your, your supposition that his stand-up is good here. McFall seems to have very good footwork as he stalks Connor O'Kane across the cage. Connor establishing those inside and outside leg kicks. May pay off for him in the end. Big left hook, swing and a miss from Connor O'Kane there. Nice uppercut landed by Kev. Inside leg kick may have been a little low. I think so. <laughs> a show of respect there between the two fighters. Connor said, you okay? Kryptonite said, no, it's good. Let's keep doing this. And do what they do. Big swings from both fighters there, missed on this occasion, as they try and find the range. Ooh, leg kick looked to wobble, but fall a little bit. So Connor continues to circle with Kevin McFall occupying the center of the cage. A good stand-up exchange we're seeing here. Uh, maybe Connor thinking that uh, he's got the best of the ground and the stand-up. Both fighters still exchanging straight shots. Uh, good inside leg kick again. 
Neither seems to have too much of an interest in the ground. We'll have to see how that develops as the fight goes on. <laughs> like I said, it's all fun and games until someone gets hit really hard. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and on that note, Connor landed a stiff jab to Kevin's nose right there. Continuing on, big leg kick from Kryptonite McFall. Both these guys are going to have trouble getting out of bed tomorrow. <laughs> I think so. And it'll be no low stools for them at the bar later either. <laughs> Nice Nearly clips him with that right hook. Again, stepping in strong with those leg kicks. Might be a war of attrition here on each other's legs. It could very well be. As uh, McFall continues to stalk from the center. We're heading for the closing seconds of round one. I hate to be a judge for this round. Absolutely. Neither fighter seemed to pull too far ahead there. With both of them working such strong leg kicks, uh, we'll see if they continue to do that in round two. I know I wouldn't want to put my legs through two rounds of that. In the ring now, the beautiful Jolene, Clan Wars ring girl. So how does she compare with the UFC ring girls? Uh, she's not bad. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> can't really complain. Sorry, I don't mean to put you on the spot there. Can't really complain from where I'm sitting. <laughs> Mark Leonard, Jake Hecht here at the Ulster Hall for Clan Wars 10. This is our 11th fight this evening of a 15 fight card. We're heading into round two now between Kevin Kryptonite McFall. He's representing Chum Sut. Cornered there by former world champion Thomas Lamont. And his opponent, Conor O'Kane of the YSFC. So the last round was both fighters circling each other, looking for an advantage on the feet. Let's see if uh, the second stanza is going to match that rhythm. Again with those leg kicks. A big leg kick landed by Kane there, as McFall is trying to find a home for that jab of his. Woo! A big nice right hand, hand landed by McFall. Converted to a takedown for Connor Kane. He definitely felt that. We saw his legs give way a little bit. Looking for a triangle straight away. Back up to their feet. All fun and games till someone gets hit hard. Absolutely, it just happened. <laughs> so um, McFall has been looking for a home for, for either of his hands, actually, for the, for the whole of the first round. That's the first time he's managed to, to connect with some tenacity, and uh, we saw the effects buckling the knees momentarily of Connor Kane. McFall seems to be more of a boxer technician, whereas uh, Connor seems to be more inclined to uh, throw leg kicks and, and choose the Muay Thai route. Both of them skilled stand-up fighters, though. Yeah, it's, it could certainly go either way, although McFall has the ascendancy for this round. There's nothing between them as of yet. Now, both fighters seem to have found their range now. Uh, as McFall continues to stalk from the center with O'Kane circling around the outside. McFall seems to be the aggressor, whereas Connor seems to be sucking him in just fine and landing those leg kicks. McFall tries to cut off the ring, lands a leg kick of his own. Followed up by a return leg kick. Follows right back. O'Kane. Tit for tat between these two for the whole fight. Wow, strong right leg kick. Puts what Connor a, on his butt. What an excellent leg kick from Connor O'Kane, taking McFall clear off his feet. I've heard it said that if a fighter returns a leg kick right after getting what it means that it hurt. <laughs> I wonder if that's the case between these two. Like I said, I think both of them are going to have trouble getting out of bed tomorrow as uh, <laughs> they'll probably have trouble putting weight on those left legs. Absolutely. Another, Another leg, right kick. leg kick. That damage has to be starting to accumulate, right, Jake? I, I can't imagine that it feels very good on that left leg. <laughs> I can't even count the number of leg kicks he's taken on the outside of that leg. Big right hand from McFall. And that's the right hand that he had 
Ooh. You're starting to see the effects of those leg kicks. Uh, for the first time, he blinked. And there's another. And now there's blood in the water. And O'Kane is starting to hammer damage in. He's limping. McFall is actually limping in the ring. You can never show weakness in a fight because the fighter, other fighter is just going to target that area more and more. You really don't see that too often, but uh, I'd say McFall is going to pay for that when this next round starts off. McFall has taken a lot of leg kicks on that leg, and he's definitely showing the effects of it as he limps around the ring in his corner. All right. So no prizes for guessing where Conor O'Kane is going to target his next attack when the third <laughs> round begins. If he continues to suck him in and keep continue to throw those leg kicks, I see it paying off for him in the end. Eager to see how much movement and uh, ability Kev has with his hands with the lack of that left leg. Yeah, it's going to get extremely serious, it would say, in the third round now as these two both try and take the win back. McFall's corner really getting in his ear, telling him to finish out this fight strong. Referee Deck Larkin clears the seconds from the ring as we head into the third and final round of this featherweight GMP contest. McFall still trying to get a bit of movement in that left leg. Now, how many seconds will it be before O'Kane throws his first nice, leg kick? Deep. Yeah, and we see McFall's answer. He's not going to wait for that leg kick to land. He's going to take the offensive. Connor straight away looking for that leg kick. Wow. Another strong leg kick. I think that was about 20 seconds. <laughs> That's another fantastic stand-up match that we've seen here at the Ulster Hall tonight. Both these fighters demonstrating fantastic skill in the striking range. There hasn't been any need for clinch or for ground or any of that other mess. <laughs> They've all been playing it out on the feet. Connors really having tunnel vision towards that left leg. I feel like it could open some things up for him if a uh, big takedown by Kevin as he did not want to take any more of those leg kicks. No, he's, he's got to defend that leg now at this point. We, we've seen him limping at the end of the last round and he's taken a few more kicks since then. It can't feel too good right now. Connor was looking for that guillotine, but Kev's able to slip his head out. We'll now see Connor's uh, ground game that uh, I was told about in the beginning of this fight. We'll see uh, if he's able to pull anything off here from the bottom position. We can actually see from our commentary position the damage that's been done to the left leg of uh, McFall. It's, uh, it's very red, and uh, I would not like to be in his shoes tomorrow or later tonight. <laughs> Absolutely not. That's the benefit of uh, watching the action exactly from out here. Right. <laughs> That's fall postures up. Looking for O'Kane that knee takes bar. advantage to try and get a knee bar. Eats a big shot from on top from Kryptonite. But he's tenacious about that knee bar. McFall's doing the right thing and putting weight on that leg so he can't uh, straighten it out. Connor rightly calls him up and wants some more action on that leg. And uh, we can hear McFall's corner encouraging him to switch to southpaw to protect that leg. We'll see how good of a boxer he is from the southpaw stance. Well, everything changes, of course, when you put the other leg in front. Exactly right. So uh, it'd be interesting to see how, he can, how his footwork behaves when uh, everything is reversed, essentially. Connors, you have to throw a kick. I feel as though that's going to be his bread and butter to, to finish out this round and uh, maybe get the nod. And yeah, and let the judges know, look what I did during this fight. Exactly. Look, how, look, look how much damage has been done. But uh, the southpaw tactic has actually been working. Targets that leg, ends up getting the takedown, does McFall. Uh, ate a couple of glancing up kicks, which don't seem to bother him at all as he goes, he's trying to work a, a telephone lock from there. In but, his uh, eye control finishes out that third round on top. Could go either way. But the clock has run down. So which way do you think this fight's going to go? I don't know. The first round was too close to call. The second round would have gone to Connor with those strong leg kicks. And you, you might have given the third round to McC uh, McFall with those takedowns. I really don't know. You've heard what UFC veteran Jake Heck had to say. Let's get inside the cage and hear what the judges have made their decision. <laughs> 